Cunningham Town Board. Please come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Present. Here. Mr. Otto. Here. Mr. Weiler. Ms. Weiler. Here. Chair Hayes. Present. Now we have approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Move approval. Second. Moved and approved that the minutes from the previous meeting be approved. Any concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, it passes. Committee to verify bills. We've got $38,231.40. General assistance fund is $30,946.37. Correct? Correct. Get approval of the bills. Move approval of both. Second. Moved. Seconded that the bills be approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, it passes. Reports of officers? None? None. Any petitions and communication? Seeing none. Move on to old business. Seeing none. New business. Resolution number T2003-08-0011. R. Resolution authorizing the intervention and appeal to Property Tax Appeal Board. Neiman Foods. County market. You want to address that issue? Um, they have filed a complaint. Last time their assessment was $1,000. Last time they didn't have an appraisal. And they found the property tax appeal board, um, and they have an appraisal done. And we had talked to Mr. Neiman, and we had agreed that we thought the assessment was too high. And we thought we had an agreement with him, but then his tax agent decided that they only would settle on a value that was less than their own appraisal. So we didn't think that that was a good idea. So uh, we're going to proceed. We hope to work this out beforehand, but we still have to intervene in order to protect ourselves. Questions? It was about $200,000 you dropped, right? When you came back the second time, it was about $200,000 less than what it was the first time, the appraisal? Yes. That they wanted to be. And they still didn't want to go along with the program. They wanted to be lower than their own appraisal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion? Uh, I move we uh, approve resolution number T 2003 08 004R. Second. We and seconded. Resolution T 2003 08 004R. Be approved. Any concerns? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Resolution passes. Number two, an amended agreement concerning the disposition and use of funds dispersed through the town of Cunningham City of Urbana Consolidated Social Service Program, physical year 2003-2004, Homestead Apartments. Any comments? AmeriCorps worker and they do not have one this time around so the funds are being used um, for administrative purposes. Right. So we we just need to approve the amended agreement? Is Correct. That it's, okay. Because we have to do a new contract. I have a question. Um, any, you have any concerns? Uh, if the um, America program was not canceled, then uh, Homestead Apartments would have got along fine with the administrative costs that they had, right? 
as far as we know. I don't know if they didn't receive any funding from anybody else or... But it's going for administrative and operational support. No, the question I'm asking is, was the administration and operational support going to be taken care of if America didn't fall through? I would assume. But because the $4,300 is available, <laughs> they want to switch, switch the budget, right? Uh, no, actually, I think it works the other way around. I think they have to make up the work that the AmeriCorps volunteer would do, and that's actually going to cost them more because AmeriCorps, I don't know what they had. Do you know they how just get like a, a grant after they complete their year there. They just receive like a lump sum of maybe $2,000. And that's, that's from AmeriCorps. But do you know what the agency, when an agency has AmeriCorps volunteers, what, how much money the agency has to put into having, I don't think they get them free, but they, but they pay, they, Homestead would have had to pay something to have an AmeriCorps volunteer, but I guess my point is whatever they had to pay for an AmeriCorps person was, would have been less money than what they're going to have to pay now to do the AmeriCorps person's job. Correct. And I think that's why they, they want it for administration, because it will, this probably, this is going to cost them more now, and we are, and our grant isn't going to pick up that whole cost. I think it's my understanding. I think Ms. Wyman, did you know something about this? Just that uh, from a couple years ago, I remember hearing that uh, an Ameri to have an AmeriCorps uh, volunteer to, or AmeriCorps staff person, it was about five thousand dollars or so that the agency had to put up, um, and and then I guess that the AmeriCorps chart program paid for the rest of um, of the costs for the staff person for a year. So. If the change is only what about it's about four thousand dollars I think or four between four and five, then that's my guess is that's about what the agency um, was going to have to pay for their AmeriCorps chart person. But I think as Ms. Pat said, suggested, the 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 amount of um, staff work you know was for a full time person basically. So it's going to be more than uh, certainly cost more than five thousand dollars for the agency. Right. Jennifer, do you have anything to say? No. This most of us seem to be in agreement that it's going to cost Homestead more now than it did before, a motion would be in order. I move that we amend the agreement concerning the disposition and use of funds to disperse to the Town of Cunningham, City of Urbana Consolidated Social Service Program fiscal year 2003-2004. Second. I move and second it that the uh, agreement be amended concerning the disposition of use of funds dispersed through the Town of Cunningham, City of Urbana Consolidated Service Fund. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 Any other comments? before this meeting is uh, adjourned. This meeting now stands adjourned. I'd like to call this meeting of the Urbana City Council to order. Will a clerk please call the roll. Alder Persons Chenoweth. Present. Hayes. Present. Puth. Otto. Present. Pat. Present. Waylon. Wyman. Here. Mayor Satterthwaite. Here. First item on our agenda this evening is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So Is there move. A motion. So move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any additions or corrections? What the mayor voting? We don't have a any discussion. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to make sure we a quorum with the mayor on something. Here's one where the mayor didn't vote. Heard from either. Uh, uh, yes, Miss Miss Huth uh, is out of town. Um, I forget where she, she, she's uh, working. She uh, called me from out of town and said she wouldn't be able to make it back in time for the meeting. I saw Mr. Whelan this weekend. Um, so he called uh, earlier and said that he was called out of town. Yeah. There are going to be a couple items 
Um, well, we have we have uh, just put it on the minutes. I guess not. No, we haven't. Any discussion on the minutes? No discussion. All those in favor of approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> that motion carries. Uh, we're now at additions to the agenda. Uh, if we're not expecting uh, Mr. Whalen or Ms. Huth, there are a couple items that uh, we can't vote on tonight. Uh, coming from the Committee of the Whole, items C and D uh, require six votes of council members, so we don't have enough. Uh, so if there's no objection, um, we'll go ahead and put that on uh, a meeting for two weeks. I was just wondering if, if it needs to be, do either of these need to be done um, sooner than that? Because we could have a special meeting before the committee meeting next week, if that's the case. Time is or April. I, I don't think that two weeks would make that much a dif okay. difference. I think that um, that in t after two weeks, we have a development agreement requirement in D and C. We're probably okay. If I find out otherwise, I will notify you and we can call a special meeting. If we need six votes, I'll just alert you. I may be gone two weeks from now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to be here, but depending on uh, schedule works out, I may not be able to be here. If you have six votes otherwise, that's not a big deal. Otherwise, we should probably try to squeeze it in. But you will be here next week. I will, yes. <coughs> Meeting. Go ahead Let's have a special meeting. Okay. okay. We'll go ahead and uh, put that on a special meeting at 7.30 a week from today. So items uh, C and D of the uh, Committee of the Whole Report um, are off the agenda. Any other additions or corrections to the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll go to petitions and communications. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the council for a period of no more than five minutes, if you'll uh, fill out one of these cards and uh, bring it up to myself or the clerk, we'll get a chance to do so. Uh, first, we have uh, Joe Duchesne on the proposed uh, hotel tax increase. Uh, Joe, you know, council members, you've gotten a letter from the uh, Urbana hotel owners and managers uh, on your desk this evening and uh, Mr. Duchesne is here to elaborate on that. Uh, good evening everyone. Um, I'm Joe Duchesne, the general manager at Eastland Suites uh, in Urbana. Um, I'm here representing uh, the, uh, the local hotels that have signed the letter that's in front of you. Uh, this letter was written uh, in opposition for a tax or an increase in our hotel occupancy tax that is in the proposal or discussion process um, uh, within the local community. This tax uh, it was uh, is allowed for uh, by the uh, signing of a bill by Governor Vagoyevich uh, uh, authorizing the uh, downstate sports facility authority. And that authority has taxing uh, powers to uh, implement a hotel occupancy tax up to 2%. Uh, and that tax, uh, for the authority to do that, however, needs uh, council approval uh, from each municipality that's going to be supporting it. Um, the, um, uh, there's quite a few issues involved with the sports facility authority, uh, more so than I can go over here in five minutes. That's why I wrote you the letter, uh, so that you could uh, have a chance to look at the issues that we've been looking at. We've, we've known about this for about the last month and a half to two months. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion among our hotel uh, uh, partners and have come to the conclusion that it is not something that we really want to see in, uh, happen in this community at this time. It's also uh, uh, the, the issue of the, the overriding issue, however, is still the increase in the local hotel tax. Um, and so we're very concerned about the damage that that could do on our, on our ability to compete regionally uh, with other cities with lower occupancy taxes. Uh, we're also uh, uh, very concerned about the image that it will give to our customers as they come in and check into our desks and, and face um, a 13 percent occupancy tax. Uh, that tax would be the largest tax, occupancy tax, uh, outside the city of Chicago. And so I think you can uh, uh, you look at our community uh, here and look at the city of Chicago 
there might have been reasons in Chicago to do it, to keep the Bears or to keep the White Sox, but uh, to do something like this to uh, develop a, a regional or a local hockey team, I think, is uh, taking a step, pretty broad step in regard to uh, uh, that, that ability. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions now, that's fine. Uh, Jeff Edwards is also here with me. He's the uh, manager of the uh, Holiday Inn in Urbana. Uh, he's also a signer on the letter. Uh, we're available now or at any time to answer any of your questions uh, involved with this uh, facility and, and the taxing issues um, that will be, I'm sure it will be coming before you folks within oh, the next four to six weeks. Uh, if you haven't already been lobbied by uh, their, uh, their attorney or the Mervis Group or their Mervis Group's attorney, I'm sure you will be. Um, we do not have a PowerPoint presentation to show you. All we have is uh, our our instincts and our ability to operate hotels standing in our, you know, with us, and so uh, we we feel that uh, we we have experience in this, and and hopefully that's enough to uh, persuade you folks to back us in regard to opposing an increase in tax. Are there any questions, uh, Mr. North? Yes, thanks for um, bringing this to our attention. Um, I I just want to understand one of the points in the letter. Uh, what you say is that the um, that the downstate sports facility authority has been exempted from property tax, so they would be developing um, facilities that were tax exempt. And it sounds like the um, the same property that's designated for an ice rink or some kind of sports facility could also contain hotels or restaurants, which would also be tax exempt. Is you that know, correct? I'm, I, I'll tell you, I'm not an attorney, and I've I've read the laws, and and I can only. Uh, Guess that uh, that they pro any, anything on the sports facility site uh, would be tax exempt, uh, whatever use that would be put to, as long as it's conforming use to what's in the law. Uh, but the uh, and so I'm I'm real skeptical. I I can for, for, could foresee a hotel being built there that would be property tax exempt, a restaurant being built there that property tax exempt. However, it really deter is determined by. Who makes up the authority, and what what uh, how broad the authority interprets it, and that's one of the issues that we have a real problem over at this point. Is the governor has established the law that allows for the authority. He hasn't established the board as of yet, and so we don't know what the what the you know the, the uh, feelings of that board would be. However, we do know that that board will still want to pass a hotel tax of two percent, and that we're still opposed to. So. I just have a quick follow-up question. Um, it sounds from the letter also that you you attempted to contact Lagoyevich's office and were unable to receive. No, no we have done nothing questions. in regard to the uh, uh, with the governor as far as him to dissuade him from signing the bill. Uh, the bill was um, uh, uh, I think it was uh, presented by uh, Senator Winkle, uh, and but I'm not sure how it actually went through uh, uh, the process. All we know is that it was. Uh, supported. I, if you looked at last Sunday's paper, uh, you will notice that the Mervis Group and uh, the um, uh, uh, Fox Atkins Group were pretty big donors this last couple months to B Governor Bogoyevich's campaign fund. So you can get an indication that there's probably pretty good interest uh, from them to get that passed. Mm -hmm. or so I, I guess I asked the question because a lot of the questions you raise, um, I also I read. I read the paper and I read your letter, and the questions you raise are ones that I share, and I wonder how you're pursuing answers to those questions. Well, we've, we've asked most of these questions to the group, but we've not really gotten any substantial answers to them. Mm -hmm. uh, our basic answers that we've gotten are, well, what can we do to make this work? Well, our general feeling is really nothing because it's the issue of the tax that overrides everything, and that's something that that uh, just won't go away from our point of view. So we're not going to, you know, we're not in a position to bargain that away. Mm -hmm. The issue of the tax is uh, paramount. When you say you've asked the group, what group are you referring to? Uh, the Mervis um, uh, group and their attorney. Okay. That's all. Thanks. All right, thank you. If, if you would note, my I, I don't have my email address on there. It's jduchane at advancenet.net. I'd like to note that, and if you have any questions, you can email me, and I can, you know, sometimes that's easier than uh, trying to catch people on the phone anymore. So, Joe, I did have a question. One of the points you made was that, uh, based on 
the numbers that <clears throat> the group is using, the development group is using for the convention center and the sheets of ice and so forth, is that a certain number of room nights would be generated, uh, hotel room nights would be generated, um, but um, your belief is that, and uh, for you and the rest of the hotel managers and owners in Urbana, that it would have a, the radius of the effect of the, the convention center would be relatively small within, say, a half a mile of the uh, convention center. You think that there would be enough rooms to, um, to supply the demand uh, for that convention center, and so that that economic development effect would not reach to Urbana or to, uh, quite frankly, to many of the hotels in Champaign. Is that? Uh, well, yeah, yes. An interesting dynamic that goes on there is that they're looking at developing a hotel that'll uh, in that in that process that'll generate thirty six thousand room nights a year, thirty six thousand five hundred for what they're planning. Uh, their project is only looking like uh, 35,000 is what they're talking in regard to economic impact. But within a quarter mile of that site, uh, I estimated that there's around 120,000 vacant room nights a year sitting empty um, uh, given local vacancy rates. And so something, you know, an event occurs over there, uh, people typically stay closest to the event that they possibly can. Uh, overflow would go from the new hotel to those hotels that are over in that area, and, un and until they filled up, it would not, they wouldn't show up in Urbana. Uh, the other issue is if something occurs on a busy weekend uh, where we're, our hotels are busy uh, and we cannot take any overflow that would come from that, those rooms would go to Rantoul. You know, and so and during busy times, you won't see them either because typically, Busy is real busy around here, and and regular is pretty slow. So, I see what you mean. Kind of a double double thing that goes on there, and so the overflow to Urbana is pretty far down the line as far as uh, most of the events that will occur there, because most of the events are 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 uh, sports events of uh, you know hockey games that sort of thing, which you get two teams of 15 people each and a small fan base. Uh, that would come in from out of town, you're really not going to see a lot of economic impact from that. As, and I indicated in there that 53% uh, of their economic impact that they, they call for in their economic impact study, which you probably haven't seen yet, is derived from 28 days of events that are related to meetings and conferences. And so, I mean, it's so the sports side of that. That's 28 like, days a year? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's. Uh, you know, I mean, twelve percent of the uh, of the use of the facility will generate fifty three percent of the economic impact. But the, our real concerns are: will that facility get its full twelve percent, or you know, if we're going to throw that this, as much money as they're asking at it, uh, really we ought to be developing a convention center if we're going to develop anything and, and worry about ice through some other taxing method. But as I said, still the overriding interest is. No tax. I mean, that's uh, that's the real issue with us. So, uh, Ms. Wyman, um, you compared the taxes to um, Chicago, and I'm wondering also what is the Rantoul tax for uh, hotel? You know, i I'm not sure what Rantoul. It's probably 10 percent. Okay. It could be 11 percent. Most most uh, municipalities now, whether they're home rule or not, are in the any, anywhere from the eight to uh, twelve percent range uh, in central Illinois. Bloomington Normal's twelve percent. I think Springfield's ten percent. Um, I can get you that information. The Illinois Lodging Association also will. They have a document that's published. I could get to you that that shows the occupancy rates and, and that sort of thing. Thank the real you. concern about it, you know, is is the Illinois Lodging Association says that you know a two percent change in uh, your occupancy tax can have a negative impact up to 5% in occupancy, hotel occupancy rates. So what's the point in increasing our occupancy tax by 2% to turn away 5% more people? Sure. So. Thank you. All right, thank you. Like I said, any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Jeff, did you want to say add anything? Or? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, oh, that's all right. Uh, next is uh, Redith Ewing, 2102 Melrose, uh, on the topic of the taxi ordinance. I'm not a really good speaker, so bear with me here. 
Um, for some time, I've been uh, going to various people in the city asking uh, if I couldn't do something about people who were scanning my radio uh, transmissions. Um, I've asked uh, someone to crack down on people who, who uh, drive taxis without the proper taxi licenses, without the proper insurance, etc. The current taxi ordinance makes it entirely too easy for Joe Blow to uh, go out on the street and call himself a taxi driver. You don't have to have anything except a car and enough money uh, to pay your first two months insurance. The second thing uh, is that we need to add some sort of enforcer. Uh, the city needs to have somebody who is designated to make sure that the rules that you have in the taxi ordinance are followed. What has happened is that we have eight or ten small operators, uh, most of them with one cab, who congregate down in front of the Illinois terminal and they fight each other. They, uh, it, it's a really disgraceful. Uh, and I'm sure that the next thing's going to happen is that taxis are not going to be allowed at the terminal. Yellow Cab has calls. We don't have to sit down and wait for people to come out of the uh, door to um, get a, a passenger. We transmit our calls via radio. The people who are sitting down at the bus station and the train station also have scanners and they listen to our calls. If there is one close, they run over and try to pick it up. Uh, that's stealing. Now, uh, I talked to Mayor Satterwaite once and he said, well, he thought it was enterprising that they were able to use technology uh, uh, to their advantage. Now, he probably doesn't remember that, but uh, uh, all I'm saying is that there is a mess. Um, I am the largest taxi owner. I have 20 cars. They don't run all the time, but uh, uh, I would uh, just not like to be embarrassed by the other people in the taxi business. Go ahead. Ivan? So it sounds like the, the main issue is um, other taxi companies stealing, basically stealing your business by, by hearing about where, where the pickups are supposed to happen. Right. And there isn't any security over the radio lines? Or, I mean, I, I don't know well, that technology well for, enough. Uh, I think it was $500 a radio, the radio cost two. I, I installed what's called a scrambling Dealy in about 12 uh, radios. Uh, and then when we tried to use it, the drivers, my drivers, refused to use the scrambler because it, it made a noise every time uh, you turned, you know, every time you keyed up the microphone, there was a noise. And uh, anyway, they refused to use it. Hmm. So it was not cost effective. I see. It did work, however. Thank you. Other questions? To clarify uh, your recollection of my comment, I recall my comment was that it was enterprising for them to use cell phones uh, for their businesses, but I did not, <laughs> I don't recall that you, you mentioning that they were stealing your radio calls, uh, but certainly if they're doing something unethical, that's uh, enterprising in a way that we don't want to encourage. But. Um, uh, so you may have had a erroneous recollection of my comments. Possibly. Thank you. I would like to, to uh, urge you to please study this question. I'd like to uh, I'd like to have something more uh, pithy in the ordinance. Barman, you yeah, I just want to. Uh, wondering if um, I know our legal staff is. Uh, 
probably working on a lot of different issues right now, but if that's something to look over, or see if you know there are even other um, other communities who have have something some teeth in in their ordinances about stealing other customers or something like that um, to to look over over that. And I don't know if if the um, mayor, if you convene the everyone who's got taxi licenses once a year or anything like that to because um, I know there have been other issues that taxi uh, businesses have brought up and, and I think you deal a lot with them on a um, as they come up rather than waiting um, waiting for any sort of annual meeting but I'm wondering if you could get the um, if legal staff could take a look at, at maybe making it a little stronger seeing if there's a way to do that got it I just want to make one more point, and that is that there are people who uh, do not follow the state rules. That they they run around with uh, vans that are not licensed and are not insured. Uh, there was an accident uh, not too long ago, within the last three months, uh, somewhere uh, between here and Chicago. Some fellow had 18 people in his van mm -hmm. and uh, no insurance, and he'd done it before. Uh, there needs to be somebody who can check this that kind of thing. Our people, the people who come into this community and who ride in taxes need to know that they are insured in that taxi. Uh, there's no reason to have uh, an ordinance if you can at least uh, provide the community with some sort of protection. There's just two issues. One is I, I um, the way radio technology works, it's unclear to me how our police would enforce uh, people decoding radio signals and then, because there's no record of them having received those signals. So unlike data that transmits and there's sometimes a record, a log of how data is transmitted, with radio signals it's actually, I mean this is the reason why the federal government is chasing down pirate radio stations and is con and is eluded by them um, all of the time because they can't actually figure out who's transmitting uh, from where they're transmitting and they and they also don't have any documentation of, of uh, receipt that's that's the nature of radio so I'm I'm not sure um, I think probably the best um, way in which that could be enforced is for cab companies that have that happening, your cab company included, to try to find a pattern of who it may be. Um, well, who we is, always know who it is. Uh, and, and then the question would be whether or not, um, I'm not sure if the law says that you cannot, actually, I, I, Radio Shack sells the radio descramblers down the street here. So I know that it's legal to actually own them. Um, and it, I don't think it's, and then there's specific purposes by which it can be used, but it's very difficult to enforce um, that because there's just not a data trail. So I, I just wanted to bring that up that it's not, um, it, it's something where a, a cab company doing that would have to be caught in the process of receiving a radio signal that was unauthorized for them. Um, then the, the second issue you brought up um, of the, j just the issue of whether or not there are, and we have it. We have an ordinance on the books, and and with every law that we have in Urbana, it's really um, both up to our police enforcement, and they're and they're limited in number, as well as to citizens, business owners, and residents to raise the issue to to actually give us some some information about who may be, uh, you know, operating ghost taxis, so to speak, uh, or they, in New York we used to call them gypsy taxis. Um, who are not regulated. So I think that um, whenever you find, uh, whenever you find evidence or any cab drivers find evidence that there's a gypsy taxi operating, I think you know our, our police department needs to get a phone call because otherwise it's very difficult for us to to enforce that kind of thing. But it certainly is a serious issue um, when there are people who think that they're walking into a cab that is that is authorized and licensed and they're safe to do so and they're not that. And we certainly have a number of visitors and students in our community, and so it's definitely of concern. But I really think that we need the cab industry to help us enforce that and to really contact, be in close contact with our police department. Not really sure if looking at our ordinance, if the hole is in the ordinance or is in the enforcement. It sounds like it's in the enforcement. 
Well, our drivers, when they see somebody uh, who is who doesn't have the proper license plate on, uh, we can't tell if they're properly insured. But you can tell if you have just a regular license plate on a, a vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, then we do call the police, and uh, so far to no avail. Uh, there is a company called Illini Limo, which uh, is said to run around without uh, any sort of uh, uh, license plate, proper license plate, either an LY or a TX or a PT. Those are the three uh, public transportation licenses that I'm aware of. And they're still doing it. So maybe there's something I, I don't know how to do. You know, the um, supposedly Illinois has a mandatory car insurance law, supposedly. Now, back in New York, you have a mandatory insurance law. And what happens is the, uh, the state and the insurance companies are, are work together. And when that insurance gets ready to expire, the insurance company tells the state. And then the state tells those individuals that if they do not renew their insurance, then they want the plates. So until such time as the state and the insurance company, you know, work that thing out, then there's going to be a lot of people driving around with little or no insurance, even though they say it's $500 fine. Uh, if the state will work with insurance companies to uh, take those license plates away, then we find that we really would have a mandatory insurance policy. I spend 50000 a year or more on insurance. Yeah, that's you. But I mean, the law says everybody's supposed to have it. What are you doing? Any other petitions and communications this evening? Council members? Right, well, yes. I uh, received a couple of uh, contacts from uh, people in my neighborhood who expressed concern about the meeting time for the Development Review Board. Actually, it was, uh, they were also posted to the neighborhood list. You may have seen them. And they, they raised a, a valid point that uh, having a meeting at 1.30 in the afternoon does not uh, facilitate public involvement. I um, responded that I thought when we change uh, the regulations to the Development Review Board that that would be one of the things that would change. But I did say I'd bring it up tonight, and I do hope that's on the list of uh, things to look at. Uh, for the Development Review Board about making sure meetings are um, outside of the traditional work day so that members of the public can attend. Any other petitions and communications? Seeing none, um, we'll go to old business. We have one item under old business, and that's uh, appointment to the Community Development Commission. It was deferred <coughs> to this meeting, and it's uh, Carl Perry, who is an assistant wrestling coach at the U of I. He's uh, been a member of the community for eight years, resident of Urbana since November of last year, and received his bachelor's degree from the University in Leisure Studies. And if um, approved by the council, his term will run until June 30th, 2006. I believe there's been a motion and a second. Uh, is there, from the last meeting, is there any discussion? Discussion. Will the clerk please call the roll? But not, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, next, we have uh, reports of standing committees. Um, we have a report from the Committee of the Whole. Strato, I believe you're um, on for uh, giving the report. I don't know if you're okay. uh, with the absent council right. members this evening. We've taken C and D off the agenda, but the other two items are still on, right? Right. Okay. Uh, ordinance number 2003-07-074, an ordinance revising the annual budget ordinance uh, for consultant landfill mit mitigation. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on a budget ordinance for landfill mitigation. Um, <clears throat> is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderpersons Chenoweth? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Otto? Yes. 
Pat? Yes. Wyman? Yes. Mayor Satterthwaite? Yes. Motion carries with six ayes. Mr. Otto? Ordinance number 2003-07-075, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign a road right-of-way dedication, uh, 706 South Glover. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderpersons Chenoweth? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Otto? Yes. Pat? Yes. Wyman? Yes. Motion carries with five ayes. Mr. Otto? Uh, that concludes the report of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, the Committee of the Whole will next meet on Monday, uh, August 11th at 7.30 p.m. here in the uh, Urbana City Council Chambers. All right, thank you. New business. We have a couple of items here, and Mr. Walden's passing around something that uh, uh, for this first item is an ordinance approving an amendment concerning vacations, vacation rights of way dated October 1, 2001 for the North Campus of the University of Illinois. Mr. Walden. We made a late adjustment on the uh, language as it relates to defining what the CPI is. Uh, we didn't make that change until today, this morning. and. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, Jack and April and Bill actually worked that out this morning. I was kind of out of the loop, and but they did a great job. And uh, um, so this is a small change from what's in your packet. And the the, the change is really uh, on page two of the document at the bottom. So with that, just a little bit of background. If you'll recall, this this um, relates to agreement an agreement that we reached with the university. Uh, in October 2001 that um, provides for vacation of significant properties or streets that are west of Harvey Street in Urbana in the University of Illinois District. The, um, the, the agreement operated as we expected that it would until recently. Um, in 2001, the university acquired the properties that we expected them to acquire, and we vacated the right-of-ways that we expected to vacate, and we received in September 2001 a $725,000 payment. Um, in 2002, again, we were able to vacate the properties or the uh, streets that we had anticipated, and the university was able to complete acquisitions that allowed for a second payment of 725000 to be made to the city. If you will recall, the total $2.9 million was divided into four payments. Uh, we're now approaching the third payment. Um, the August 2003 payment if everything had gone as we had expected, would have been $725,000. However, due to circumstances that we couldn't foresee, and, and the university was not able to uh, uh, allocate the dollars necessary to buy certain properties, and uh, we were not then able to vacate uh, streets that we thought we would have vacated under the agreement because we're not going to vacate them until by the terms of the agreement itself until the university owns the properties uh, that surround the right-of-way. You all recall that, I'm sure. So what we have uh, tried to do is to look at where we are. Um, if we were to only proceed on the vacations that we have made to date pursuant to the agreement, our August 2003 payment would be $504,839. However, in working with the university and one property owner, we were able to resolve certain concerns about access by a third party agreement between the university and Bruce's Bike Works, uh, which related to uh, concerns he's had in the past about the street remaining open. Uh, the city has agreed to maintain that street even if it were to be vacated, which we are proposing, and also to collect uh, revenues from meters and any ticket revenue that we would receive. Um, 
proceeding uh, on a program I just described, um, we would then be able to vacate Main Street. If we were to vacate Main Street, which is the proposal, then our August 2000, September 2003 payment would be 882504 That would leave, under the terms of the agreement, $567,496 that would be payable to the city when we vacate remaining three pieces of right-of-way. Um, Stoughton Street between, I gotta check my map, between Goodwin and Matthews and two alleys between Goodwin and Matthews. Those are the three pieces on the original plat that we have yet to vacate. And we cannot vacate those because there are three large properties that exist um, that use those right-of-ways for access. And until such a time as the university, again, has funds to acquire these properties, um, we're not able to uh, proceed on the agreement. However, we do anticipate that there might be the occasion in the next uh, several years wherein the university would buy those remaining properties. And if that were to occur, we would allow the right-of-ways to be vacated at a price that we agreed upon plus an escalator based on CPI. And that would run um, then to 2009. At the end of that time, this agreement expires. So what we have, <clears throat> what we've collected, if, if we proceed in this manner, we will collect roughly rounding 2.4 million of the 2.9 million that we anticipated. We will retain three strips of right-of-way, one street and two alleys, uh, to be vacated at a later time uh, with an escalator. Um, and, and basically, um, we're buying a few years to see what happens with the university. Can I ask? Uh, it's kind of complicated, but I'm ready to answer questions. Is the escalator based on CPI? Uh, would that figure be calculated as to when the check arrives at, uh, or, um, at the city, or when we send the bill, when the when the vacation uh, takes it, place? It, uh, in fact, that was one of the modifications today. It starts August 1, 2004, and then adjusts each year thereafter. Right. I'm sorry. So what I mean is, um, because my impression, or or maybe I shouldn't say my impression, what if the city agrees to the vacations called for on um, day day one, and um, the check doesn't arrive until say day 365, uh, or day 180, or or something like that? Is the the amount that's calculated with the CPI is that based on uh, the CPI as if it, the money were to be paid on day one or paid when it well, actually arrives or is sent out in the mail or that sort of thing. And maybe it's not a big deal because mm -hmm. if the city sends the bill or passes you know, the um, the vacation the next week, the, the right. check is sent out or maybe it takes Yeah, it's probably months. not a big deal. The way I, the, right, where well, there's a 30-day payment provision. The way I understand it, the price is held as it is right now until August 1, 2004, at that point in time, the CPI is applied. That's good for the next year until August 1, 2005, at which time a second CPI would apply and so on and so forth until the ex expiration of the agreement. Okay. And there's a 30-day pay provision that was also incorporated. So it could be more precise, but it, I think we got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we're staff's administration's recommending to go forward and get as much vacated as we can right now. Questions? <clears throat> um, if not, a motion would be in order. Move approval uh, of the um, of the extension agreement, including that which was presented, um, the amendment that was presented today uh, in the memorandum dated August 4, 2003. Second. We have a motion on a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Only persons Chenoweth? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Otto? Yes. Pat? Yes. Wyman? Yes.
Okay. Motion carries with five eyes. <clears throat> Next, we have a resolution of protest against a proposed text amendment to the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance. That's me. Rob's going to handle this one. Um, just some minor cleanups by the Zoning Administrator of Champaign County. Uh, to their zoning ordinance. Uh, most significantly, they are proposing a new category called regional special use. Um, they're just proposing the category right now and haven't selected any land uses to go in it. But what this would be is something like an airport or a landfill or something that could have some regional impacts. They want to be able to have the full county board review those cases on a special use permit um, um, basis. And right now, their normal special use permits are reviewed only at the uh, county zoning board of appeals. So again, they're just adding that category in, but not assigning any uses to it. Um, in the next 18 months, we will probably be seeing a full, uh, more comprehensive uh, overhaul of the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance, and I would expect some of those uses would be tied in at that time. So um, the Planning Commission had a meeting and discussed this proposal on July 10th and recommends uh, a no protest vote. So again, this is one of those backwards um, votes, but staff recommends council defeat a resolution of protest. Questions? There are no questions. A motion would be in order. Ms. Lyman. I move resolution number 2003-07-018-R. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, uh, will the clerk please call the roll and council members remember the uh, recommendation from uh, plan Commission and staff is to vote against this resolution. Alder Persons Chenoweth? No. Hayes? No. Otto? No. Pat? No. Wyman? No. That motion is defeated. And finally, we have an ordinance approving a special use permit or request to establish an accessory church office in the R2 single family residential zoning district. This is plan case number 1860-SU-3. Thanks. This is a request by St. Patrick's Catholic Church um, requesting approval to expand one of their ministries, uh, church office use um, from their parish center to a residential home that they've acquired in the past um, year and a half, which is at 310 North Polar Avenue, directly across the street. Um, um, representatives of the church requested that the house be used as office space, um, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, also to provide food distribution, which is part of the ministry that they'd like to put in this home. And those hours would be 4.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And they currently um, hold those food distribution activities across the street at the parish center. Um, the use of the property for this purchase is I'm sorry for this purpose, is considered an expansion of the church onto that lot. Um, the lot is currently zoned R2, single family residential. And on the 24th of July, the plan commission voted 6 to 0 to recommend approval of the request um, with the four conditions outlined in the staff memoran memorandum. We did have some public testimony. We had two trustees from the church and an attorney um, informally representing the church speaking um, to this case. The plan commissioners did have some concerns about the one-way alley that is directly north of the property of this home. Um, there was a lot of discussion about parking um, for the patrons that may, specifically the patrons that would come for this food distribution activity between 4.30 and 5. There was a lot of discussion about um, folks that may come between 8 and 5 to drop off food or donations and where would they park and um, there were some concerns also about Kohler being a narrow street and limited parking and would it be clear um, that those people accessing that office would be parking across the street so there were a lot of discussion from the commissioners about that and also some concern um, of different scenarios that may happen um, if, if this office was moved across the street. Um, staff is concerned about the piecemeal expansion of the church in the neighborhood. Um, the church currently right now doesn't have a master plan and we'd prefer that an overall master plan be submitted to the plan commission 
and for this reason we've requested that the special use permit um, be temporary for three years to allow the church um, adequate time to come up with a master plan um, to serve their needs and to be fair to the neighborhood. Um, on July 24th, the plan commission adopted the following findings that the proposed use would be conducive at, um, at this location, that the office and food distribution activities wouldn't pose a detriment to the district in, in which it's proposed, also that the office does meet um, standards and regulations of the district, and that it would be accessory to the church use across the street. Um, the proposed improvements to the exterior of the home would be just um, fixing the roof, that it wouldn't alter um, any exterior part of the home, that it would essentially remain a single family home and the outer appearance of the home. Um, the City Council has the following options in this case to approve the request for a special use permit without any additional conditions, to approve the request for a special use permit um, with any conditions deemed appropriate, or to deny the request for a special use permit. Plan Commission and staff recommend that the City Council approve the special use permit with the following conditions. One, that the use at 310 North Kohler um, be for the purpose of an office and food distribution to the needy, that it shall be temporary and permitted for three years, um, expiring August 31st of 2006. Prior to that date, that St. Patrick's Church um, submit a master plan to the plan, Urbana Plan Commission for, for review, um, illustrating both their short and long-term expansion expectations. If the special use permit does expire without a master plan review and approval, that the church shall reapply for special use <coughs> permit at that address at 310 North Kohler Avenue. Two, that there shall be no truck traffic associated with the temporary office use at 310 North Kohler. Three, that the house um, at 310 North Kohler meet um, any building or code requirements to conduct an office use. They would need to apply for a certificate of occupancy, and um, including inspections. And four, that there shall be no signs indicating that the structure at 310 North Kohler is used for any use other than office related uses and food distribution. And staff will take any questions. Um, I'm just wondering if they explained how there's going to be no truck traffic associated with the um, temporary office use or with basically with the food pantry. How do they expect to get the food into the pantry if they're not going to bring it by a truck from my guess is Eastern Illinois Food, uh, food Bank? They don't work with Eastern Illinois Food Bank, is, was my understanding, that they get donations from citizens and supermarkets. Okay. And so they essentially don't have large trucks dropping off mass quantities of food. Okay. And that if there was a truck, it would go into the parking lot across the street. But it was my understanding that they don't have okay. truck drop-offs. Uh, and then also with regard to the sign, it, it, um, is it uh, accurate understanding that then the uh, the sign basically that they have at the church is what they would then have over at the the property on the 310 North Kohler and nothing larger and nothing separately standing or anything like that? They are allowed to have a sign, an identification sign of 20 square feet. And they could have it freestanding. I think it's six feet. Or they could have it um, on the building. And have they indicated which they will do? No. Um, and any approval or, or like special use permit approval, um, <coughs> even temporary doesn't indicate that, or they have no uh, indicate. Basically, it doesn't indicate that the city or the plan commission will then automatically approve whatever their master site plan comes up with. Is that? That's. I mean, there's. You, we're, we're giving this, if we give the special use permit, it doesn't mean that if they come back with a master site plan that the council or the plan commission doesn't agree with, we're under no obligation by passing this special use permit to, to approve whatever they come back with, right? That would be correct. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Chalice. Do you know if uh, they are or will be paying property taxes at this location with the special use, church use? I don't believe so because it's owned by the church and it has been for over a year. 
So they haven't so been paying say no. property taxes at that. It's a tax exempt property. I believe it would be yes. Um, do you know is the their long term goal for that house to be used for food distribution from here on out or? It's my understanding that they really they haven't said they haven't really thought it out what their long term goal was and at the plan commission the trustees did speak that Father Rem is currently the priest um, at this congregation is that he would be retiring in a year and at that time they'd like to work with the trustees and the new priest um, for the next two years and hold committees and really go over work with the new priest about their long-term goals so no I don't believe that they have any long-term expectations at this address they may decide to rent it out later um, in the short term they're cramped in the parish center and they have um, to move it over is, has it been made clear that, well, two questions. One, do special use permits usually have time limits, or is this unusual that we've set a time limit? Hmm. I'm not really sure. <laughs> we've done it before? Yeah, we have I mean, done it, it before. It I'm not sure. That we do it? I know we did it for the Unitarian Church. I think we had some kind of time limit. It would be clear it went back to its, its prior use, but I... It's not that typical that we do um, a temporary situation. We did it for the Unitarian Church because they only requested it to be temporary while they remodeled. Um, but we really thought this would be a good way to kind of test it out and see how well it worked and get them to do something more long-term planning. Mm -hmm. I can't think of many other special uses that we did on a temporary basis. Okay. I, um, I agree with the idea of having a temporary special use permit. I'm wondering whether or not you all feel that that um, since we haven't explicitly stated that a renewal would be contingent on submitting a master site plan and yet that seems to be the sentiment from from reading the plan commission's minutes and it's certainly what this council member would like to see um, the the church develop would it is there some reason why we haven't stated that renewal would be contingent on that and that basically they might as well not come back to us for to renew the special use unless they have a site plan, master site plan in place. We do stipulate in the following conditions that they have three years um, to have the, these proposed activities with a special use permit and you know before that date they can submit a plan and, and get approval and after that date we'll see how it goes and if they do um, submit if they don't submit a master plan and they decide after three years that they'd like to apply for a special use permit, we would consider e extending these activities at that address. Does that answer your question? So I, I guess um, three years down the road, council may, members may forget that we decided to give them a special use permit um, for this loop without them necessarily having kind of a, a master site plan. And, and my hope would be that we would provide some incentive that would make it very clear to them that that we need to understand their plans for expansion and and that um, and that they need to have a, a master site plan um, that that our staff can can work with um, in in kind of making future decisions. And so I'm concerned that that in three years we'll forget that we asked them to do master site plan and they won't be anywhere closer to where they are now in terms of having such a plan and given that that's a sensitive neighborhood and it's certainly uh, a historic neighborhood I I feel like we should be creating either more carrots or more sticks to make sure that there's a master site plan in place in a three-year period of time well um, I can comment on that we, we don't have any specific requirements for master planning um, we strongly encourage it because uh, in our conversations with the church and other churches in the same situation there's always a tendency to expand lot by lot and um, in fact we had two conversations going on with the church at the same time I don't even think they realized that we were talking to one person about expansion on a different lot while they were asking about the special use permit process on this lot um, so our comments to them were look if you keep coming back with another request for another lot here and another lot there it's going to get a little difficult so let's bring an overall plan of what you want to do and then you wouldn't even have to keep coming back um, there would be one plan approved um, however I don't think the zoning ordinance anywhere 
requires that kind of process. They have the right to keep requesting special use permits. Um, we keep pretty close records of these decisions uh, at the end of the three years. It would come up in our tickler files that this is coming to an expiration. We'll get with them and see what their plans are, how they want to handle it, and hopefully they will, you know, have worked on a master plan and we would have been included on, in, you know, assisting them with that in some way. So um, and they, they pretty much know when it's coming to an end and then call and want to know, you know, what they need to do. Questions? Um, Ms. Bad? I had a, uh, just a question for Ms. Chen of this follow-up. I'm looking at the um, condition number one um, for the granting the special use permit in the um, and the actual uh, ordinance that we would that we'd be voting on that's on page seven. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what I guess I thought it said it says this which, which you're concerned about, but I'm wondering if, if um, how you would change the language to um, express the concern that you have differently from the way it's expressed mm -hmm. here. Well, couldn't couldn't it, couldn't we add an additional uh, condition that says um, that. Bef prior to August 31st, 2006, the um, St. Pat's will will uh, submit a master site plan, and that that's a condition of um, of this special use permit. That would actually be stronger than what what is well, here currently. It says that. So no, it just says that they. Um, it says prior to that date, they shall submit a master plan to the abandoned plan commission for review and approval. If the special use permit expires without any master plan review and approval, the church shall reapply for a special use permit. They're going to have to reapply anyway. Because so. it's a temporary special use permit, right. Now, I, I guess what I'm wondering is, I think it would be, um, I think it would be inappropriate to say a, 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 that um, another special use permit will not be approved if there isn't a master site plan, so I'm thinking that's, I mean, that's kind of what you're getting at. That's kind of what you yeah. want to say. But I'm wondering if we could say anything, uh, because we can't really commit to the next council denying something. So, that, that's right, yeah, the, the city attorney's nodding. So I'm just wondering, because that would be the obvious thing to, to make clear what you're saying. So other than that, I'm just wondering what else we could say. I, I'm sure, I, I agree with your point. I'm open to it. I just don't know how much more we can say than what this says. Well, my question then is this statement prior to that date, August 31st, 2006, the St. Patrick's Catholic Church shall, shall submit a master plan to their band plan commission for review and approval. Does that mean that, that, that it is a condition of this special use permit that they submit a master plan prior to August 31st of 2006? Six? Yeah. Is that a condition? That was our intent. Okay, I, I misunderstood yeah. then. So that that's actually what I wanted, and I, I misunderstood the language of the ordinance. Okay. Go ahead. I just have one other question, different topic. Uh, I didn't see a list of um, people to whom notice was sent about the hearing, the plan commission hearing. Did was notice sent to owners of properties yes. up to the 250, and so we just didn't yes. get that list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can get that to you if you'd like. If you're interested. Actually, I, w I would like just to have it for my files, and that's okay. something that it's um, it's good when it's attached. Occasionally, um, there's a mistake, and someone um, I know there's one in my neighborhood last year where it was either the person right next. I think it was the person right next door didn't get it, oh. and and with and the older <laughs> person is likely to notice that. Right. And so in that case, a neighbor noticed it first and 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 told them. But just if we could get, always get that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Definitely. Any other questions? If not, a motion would be in order. A move approval of the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Otto. You're moving approval with the conditions oh, yeah, the suggested ordinance by in the packet. Yes. Okay. That includes all the conditions that are stated in the copy that right. we received in our packet. Um, any other? Discussion? Any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll? All the persons Chenoweth? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Otto? Yes. Pat? Yes. Wyman? Yes. That motion carries with five eyes.